This is Badge, and today I'm going over the ramp startup of the Mirage 2000C found in DCS World. I'll begin by closing the canopy, pressing left control C twice, or right clicking on the canopy release lever, then left clicking on the canopy rest, and then left clicking on the canopy release lever to seal it. Now at this point, I'll set the parking brake to prevent the aircraft from rolling upon engine startup, and then I can enable battery power by left clicking on the red toggle switch found above the warning advisories panel. At this point we'll take a closer look at the engine control panel. Here I'm going to enable the left and right boost pumps, set the fuel shutoff valve into the open position, and set the vent selector. By default it's in the right position, labeled D, and G position will work as well. So at this point I uncover the engine ignition button and verify the throttle is in the idle cutoff position, which here it is not. Pressing the button does nothing as we see. Trying to return it to idle cutoff doesn't work unless we have it in idle and press the engine shutoff button. So at this point we will press the engine ignition button and we can see and hear the engine start up. To allow the engine to finish spooling up, we'll advance the throttle forward and return it to idle. At this point, while we wait for the engines to spool up, we will move on to the radio control panel and first set the external lighting, beginning with anti-collision, navigation and formation lighting. Above this we have the radio control panel, and we'll first start by enabling power to the VHF and UHF radios, at which point we can set the mode of operation between preset or manual. In this case I'm bringing up the kneeboard to display the preset frequencies. So I'll dial in preset 10, 133.0 MHz, for the VUHF radio, which is the frequency for the airbase I'm at, and we can see this displayed on the frequency repeater up on the front panel, which can be seen as I cycle through presets and cycle between preset and manual mode, displaying the manual frequency up on the repeater as well. So at this point we have the aircraft running and the generator supplying power to the avionics. Seeing the faults that remain on the warning advisories panel, these can be cleared by enabling pitot heat and emergency hydraulics. At this point we'll prepare for the INS alignment by moving the mode selector into the VEI position, powering the PCN. And we will move the PCN operational mode into the LG position, displaying our initial position, which as we see doesn't match up to what we have in the kneeboard. So we will clear off the data that we have in the aircraft to match the data we have on the kneeboard. To clear the latitude we can press either 1 or 7, at which point we have to set our north or south. To do this, we could press either 2 or 8. In this case, I press 2 and enter the latitude. In this case, I enter erroneous data, so I can clear it by pressing the EFF key, at which point I re-enter north or south and re-enter the latitude. Once I've entered the correct latitude, I can enter the data by pressing the enter key labeled INS. At this point, I will clear the longitude by pressing 3 or 9 and enter east or west by pressing 4 or 6. In this case, I press 6 to set east and enter the longitude, at which point I will press INS to enter the data into the PCN. Once the initial position has been entered, we'll move back down to the INS panel, and move the INS mode from VEI to Align, and move the operational mode from Normal to Status. At this point, we can see flashing Align on the PCN panel, and we can begin the alignment by pressing the illuminated VAL button. At this point we can see Align has turned solid, and we can see a countdown on the PCN counting down to the next class of INS alignment, with overall alignment status counting down from 100 displayed to the right. At this point we'll clear up the warning and advisories panel by clearing the red deco light off, and we'll do this by initiating a test of the fly-by-wire control system. We do this by uncovering and left-clicking the switch and waiting for the green illuminator to illuminate. You can run tests on a few different channels, although this is the only channel that is mandatory for removal of the red deco light. Once the illuminator illuminates, close the cover, which will clear up the warning and advisories panel, minus the parking brake. The audio control panel is found just up from here, allowing you to set various audio levels, including magic missile, marker beacons, radios, etc. The next panel up is the radar control panel, and we'll begin by rotating the radar power selector right one position, which will set it into the warm-up position, warming up the radar for about three minutes. Failing to do so, we'll add another minute to the warm-up. I'll cycle power to the eclair control box on the left side of the cockpit. I'll cycle power to the VTB, and we can see the flashing P indicating radar alignment, and I'll cycle power to the HUD. At this point, I'll also cycle power to the radar altimeter. 
Moving over to the PPA panel, I'm going to press the magic button to disable the magic seeker, as it has a limited lifetime. If I click it again, we can see a flashing P indicating seeker alignment. This takes about 30 seconds. So I'll leave this off until I need them, and I'll press the button and allow them to align. Next I'll set my bingo fuel state, in this case I dial in 1400, and now I'll move over to the IFF panel. Here it's off, we could have it in either section or continuous. In this case continuous is generally better as section will only scan the area around the TDC. Next I'll move the jammer control mode into the central position, seating control to the HOTAS. Next I'll power the jammer, radar warning receiver, and IR launch detector. At this point I'll move the decoy release mode into semi-automatic and set my desired release program, which in this case is program 1. At this point I will dial in any ILS, VOR, and TACAN stations that I wish to use throughout this flight and set the mode of operation. In this case I'm not using TACAN, so I'm just going to leave it off. At this point we'll set the auxiliary heading horizon switch to the central or forward position and we'll move over to the interior lighting. In this case, I will dial up all of the instrument and backlighting, but I will leave the flood lighting off, as it is quite extreme, and this is data. Moving over to the standby ADI, we can uncage it by left-clicking on the adjustment knob, and we will left-click on Master Caution, at which point we can move the audio warning switch into the forward position. Looking over at the VTB, we can see the flashing P is now solid, so we can move the radar power selector from warm-up to silent. So at this point, as we look around, we're able to see that we have all of our aircraft systems set up and running, although we're still waiting on the INS alignment to complete. So I'll speed this up and we'll get to see it go through its various classes of alignment. As the left countdown reaches zero, it'll reach class 4 alignment, which is the least accurate form of alignment, but still serviceable for its role as interceptor. And next is class 3, then class 2, at which point we hit class 1, which is the most accurate stage of alignment. And we can see the PRET light goes solid, and we can move the INS mode into navigation, and the operational mode back from status to normal. We can set the PCN mode to whichever mode we desire, although I'll leave it in LG. At this point, with everything set up and running, we can enable nose wheel steering, which is indicated by a blue illuminator on the gear indicator panel and we will release the parking brake, which point we can throttle up and begin taxiing over the runway.